Hello, welcome to this edition of uh, the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela. Let's quickly look at uh, the front page of today's Namibian Sun. In this segment tonight, we are joined by the chairperson of the Namibia Premier League, which has been, uh, of course, expelled from the wings of uh, the Namibia Football Association. And there's been a lot of uh, squabbling, if you like, uh, between the two parties as far as the future of Namibian football is concerned. Uh, Patrick, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, and thanks for inviting me to us. Sure, sure. Now, the, uh, maybe let me just ask you a, a blunt question first, uh, Patrick. So... When you go to bed at night as a, as a football administrator, you're a lawyer by profession, you're a farmer, you're a, <laughs> you're a well-off man. When you go to bed knowing that there are footballers um, uh, going uh, to bed empty, uh, on empty stomachs, uh, w w what goes through your mind? A lot of heartache, uh, a, a lot of uh, thinking that gives me a lot of uh, gray hair especially to the young footballers and always a concern when this uh, will finally be sorted out mm -hmm. but i'm always encouraged that uh, as soon as we sort it out uh, this will address generational problems uh, uh, going forward mm -hmm and that uh, any solution that we must find should not be for just to reach a convenient place but to address the deep-rooted uh, administrative problems that affects our footballers mm -hmm. but it re it's really a concern and as you know i'm also a chairperson of a club mm -hmm. and uh the monthly responsibil responsibilities that goes with trying to keep those players are afloat are really it's really a concern it's a, it keeps me awake uh, some nights yeah, yeah. some nights early in the morning it awaken me mm, mm, mm. but it's a it's a sign of the times uh, one of the uh, things that I think about a lot is that we must try and find a solution during these times yeah. of COVID so that uh, when uh, it subsides, we are able to play football. Indeed. So why is there no football at the moment? Just for a, a layman out there wanting to know why there hasn't been any football, any league football in particular for, for quite some time now, what is the issue? I think why, why there is no football is the fact that uh, the Namibia Football Association, the NFA, refused to issue rules for promotion and relegation. Mm -hmm. Had they done that, yeah. football would have started long ago. Uh, and they have done, they have refused this since the start of uh, last season, mm -hmm. which usually commences from August and mm. end in May. So since uh, beginning of August, primarily between September and October last year, mm -hmm. uh, at that point in time, it was the normalization committee. They realized uh, the powers that they have, that uh, if you don't issue promotion and relegation rules, there will be no football in the Premier League. Mm. And also in the first divisions. So they, they withdrew, they, they, they initially promised, in fact we were going to get the rules for promotion and relegation on 21 September 2019. Mm. It was a Saturday. Uh, that was the day of the Congress of the NPR. But the NFA or the Normalization Committee then 
having undertaken that we will get those uh, rules on the 18th of September 2019, mm. then uh, refused to give the rules. So you can't start football without uh, those rules because uh, at the end of the season, especially for the Premier League, you'll yeah. struggle to relegate any clubs because they, they are no clubs. Mm. To, I mean, there are no rules. And uh, this follows a litany of uh, a lot of precedents in the early 90s. No, in late late nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. that uh, when you start a season, there must be promotion and relegation rules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so what, what are the uh, so so that is what the MPL statutes state that that the, there has to be relegation and and um, and promotion. Yes, in fact, I think pro the, the prom uh, promotion and uh, relegation rules are are there in all leagues. Mm. Because you see, you need to keep competitiveness yeah. of the clubs, uh, and you need to keep the integrity of the game. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that if certain clubs, out of participating in competition, that's a league format. I yeah. mean, if it's a tournament, yeah. it's something else. Then you get knocked out and and the likes. Mm -hmm. But if it's a league format, you need to nourish as it were. So promotion and, re uh, and relegation rules are the, it's the blood in the body of league football. Mm. You, you go up because you have gotten certain amount of points mm -hmm. or you have won the championship. You go down because you are unable to compete with your peers, yeah. as it were. And it has worked very well, in fact. I mean, it's the, the strange thing is that we're talking about promotion and relegation when for the first time yeah. in the history of Namibian football, the season, uh, the 2018-2019 season, is yeah. the first season where you find three promoted clubs from the first division surviving relegation. Mm, mm, mm. And, and, and that is also the strange part now because um, you, 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 you are saying that you are not given the rules uh, upon which to act going forward as far as promotion and the way forward for the league is concerned. But there was um, also this directive uh, from NFA, I believe, that said uh, there shouldn't be any uh, relegations that the teams, Orlando Pirates, Civics, and another team that were relegated must uh, retain in the league. What was, your issue, what was your principal difference with that directive? There are two, there are, there are two uh, reasons against that. Number one, let's assume there's such a directive. We've had uh, so many versions. There's a directive from FIFA and the likes. Let's assume for now there's a directive. The first problem that one has with that is that directive comes after the league is completed. Yeah. So at best, uh, it's, a, it's a retroactive proposition and you know you can't do that you can't even uh, make those sort of rules after the fact number two the such a directive is contrary to the npl constitution mm. you know in order to agree to that sort of a directive that is why we called that congress you have to amend the npl constitution because that sort of directive or, or writing, when it came to the NPL, it was accompanied with the fact that uh, don't uh, effectively don't relegate these clubs. Yeah. Promote them. Yeah. So that's effectively what it says. Mm. Now the NPL constitution, unfortunately, or fortunately, yeah. says you can only promote clubs from the first division. Mm. These clubs weren't coming, Civics and Orlando Pirates and Young African weren't coming from uh, the, first division. the first division, were just relegated. Yeah, yeah. And the NPL had complied with the rules of relegation that says if you sit in position 16, 15 and 14, you are automatically relegated. It's not an act that the NPL has to write you a letter or so. Mm. It's an automatic thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, why was, why was, why was, why were there no promotions that season? Well, the national first divisions did not play, mm -hmm. or so we are told. But that is simply an excuse. Mm. 
mm. because I mean, if you go back to the season before that, there weren't leaks for the national first divisions as well. Mm. But what happened was they created a system to enable promotion and relegation. Those mini tournaments are those uh, mini tournaments mm. that they held, mm. uh, and 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 nobody complained about that, and the NPL did not complain that that did not constitute proper promotions. Mm. We agreed. Mm. And those teams came on and they were competitive enough because they survived uh, uh, relegation from the Premier League. Mm. Mm. And it is not like in this instance, since April 2019, the NPL did not suggest to assist with those sort of tournaments again so that the yeah. league starts. Mm. Mm. But that was rejected. So, so why, why, why couldn't the successes of those previous uh, mini tournaments be replicated in this case? Uh, who, who is disagreeing with, 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 with that format or, or the idea never came up uh, this time around? No, the idea came up, came up very strongly uh, because what happened in April uh, 2019 yeah. when we realized that the, when, uh, the NPL realized that uh, the first divisions were dormant. Mm. An ad hoc committee was formed between the normalization committee, yeah. uh, Mr. Paulino, uh, Mr. Harold Fule, uh -huh. and uh, Mr. Co Franco Cosmos, and Mr. Marty Mwandingi uh -huh. to resolve this issue. Uh -huh. And strangely, you know, uh, this committee met at ver various times, and then all we then got was the what you refer to as a directive. Mm, mm. Uh, what that committee resolved, one may never know. Mm, mm, mm. T -t Tell me, Patrick, um, uh, as a, a, a global practice in, in, in football, the English Premier League, Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A, and, and all other, other major leagues, maybe even uh, the Premier Soccer League in South Africa, the PSL, the... How, you know, h how much does the Football Association, how much authority does it have over the Premier League? And especially when you seem to suggest that uh, you were, the directive was actually to say, disregard your own constitution, just keep these teams in the, in, in the league. And, and there's been a lot of squabbling, people are saying you are, not, you are, you are defying your sort of mother body if you like. Uh, w what kind of relationship generally exists between leagues and, and, and football associations? That's a difficult question. <laughs> because, I mean, uh, football governing models are... Different. Very, very different. Mm. And, uh, and I think we are going through a period where we in Namibia finally are trying to define that football model. Uh, let, let me just give you an example. Like in Southern Africa, if you take Zambia, uh, the top tier league, also as it were, the NPL is mm. a structure that's governed through its FA, mm. but it has a separate management and is incorporated differently as well. Mm -hmm. And you must also remember that uh, those clubs in Zambia those 16 clubs that belong to the, or the clubs that belongs to the Super League, as they call it there, mm. have a direct voting right in your Congress. Mm -hmm. So that's a one model. Mm -hmm. in, uh, if you take Zimbabwe, for example, the, their Premier League is incorporated as a PTY. Mm -hmm. Also in a FA in which the, the, the teams have shareholding. Mm. You take South Africa, South Africa is the, the it, has, it has the system that we are almost suggesting, mm -hmm. but with a bit of the U.S. program. So what you have in South Africa is that you have a Section 21 company mm -hmm. uh, that runs, that's owned by the PSL, the 16 top clubs, and the National First Division. Mm -hmm. So the promotion and relegation happens between those two and those rules are fixed because mm. they run it and they have a, a, what they call a special relationship with their FA. Mm -hmm. You go to Botswana, Botswana now currently are suggesting a, 
a diff an almo almost the same governance model as the English, mm. where you have the top tier league, the the 16 clubs in Botswana, mm -hmm. incorporating a company uh, in which the Botswana Federation yeah. holds a per one percent. The U.S., on the other hand, uh, and Germany and, and 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 the Netherlands have a slightly different system. Mm. They have, if you look at the U.S. system, they have the professional league, mm. wholly independent from the mother body, mm. in which their relationship is contractual. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to the Netherlands, also independent, mm -hmm. uh, and the relationship is contractual. And the in the, in the Netherlands, for example, they have a, a system in terms whereof you have the professional, the IRE Divisi, yeah. only represented in the FA's professional department. Mm -hmm. Germany, also independent, but the Germans have a, a contract. Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce the, <laughs> the <laughs> German word for what they call that contract, but uh, I'll be able yeah. to provide it for you. Indeed. Now, you have gone and registered um, uh, the league with, uh, with BIPA. Well, what is the idea around that? Because it has caused a lot of uh, controversy with uh, NPL inviting clubs to join this formation and uh, NFA also running a parallel uh, process of their own, also looking for clubs to register with themselves. And, and that is stag stagnating even further the, prog the progress of football. What is the idea around registering the league with BIPA and w w what is the concept there? I think to us, let me take you back to 2009. Yeah. You know, you know, people try and make this as if it's a, it's today's problem, yeah. but it is not. Uh -huh. If you go back to 2009, the NFA, FIFA, and the NPL, concluded what is now referred to as the Vinduk Declaration. Yeah. The Vinduk Declaration was nothing else but an agreement that the NPL must professionalize by 2012. Mm -hmm. 2012 came and it has gone and we are now effectively back where we are now. We are effectively back at 2009. Mm -hmm. In 2010, Johnny Doisep, who was then chairperson, registered a PTY mm -hmm. to try and fulfill the commercialization of the NPL and, uh, by 2012. Mm -hmm. But what you will then find, very strangely, is that the NFA, in when it was agreed that they were going to amend their constitution mm -hmm. to give effect to this, in 2014, when they amended their constitution, they did neither. Mm -hmm. So where, where we are is that it's a realization. After the expulsion, we were initially suspended, as, you, as, as, as it were. Yes. But once the NPL was expelled on the 18th of July, is that the NPL clubs, the nine clubs who remained mm -hmm. because they had not the other clubs had indicated already by 11th may that uh or implored the nfa as it were by 11th may that they must form a top tier league and they will go there they don't want to do anything with the npl mm -hmm. so on the 18th well after that we called a meeting as the executive of the npl mm -hmm. and those nine clubs instructed and resolved the executive that we must now, now that we are no longer part of the NFA and has been expelled, there's no point fighting uh, to be long to this marriage where we are not wanted, oh. lest we must now go ahead and enforce on our own the 2009 declaration, which is to professionalize, mm. because, and, and, and this is how the Section 21 
company comes about. Mm. So what, what, what are the advantages? of What is it that it gives you? Number one, it gives you a legal structure mm -hmm. that can function on its own. Yeah. Number two, uh, professionalization in Namibia itself will create the biggest single employer in terms of employment. Soccer mm -hmm. players, if you just take 30 multiply by 12 uh, players registered for each and you take for each, I mean it's, it's 30 multiplied by effectively 24, take five staff uh, at administration, five, take five staff uh, at football management. We're mm -hmm. talking about more than 1,800 employees that mm -hmm. will be created just on one go. Mm -hmm. It also removes these issues relating to promotion and relegation because the two divisions, the National First Division and the, and the, and the NPL, yeah. promotion is set in terms of those rules. You don't need to wait for somebody to give you these issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, there's this, there's a debate relating to how you will then work with the FA. Mm -hmm. That relationship can be contractual. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. And I see our counterparts in South Africa are moving towards exactly what we are trying to do here. Mm. So that that relationship is contractual, relating to calling up of national team, training of referees, and the likes. Mm. And also sharing mutual uh, uh, um, issues. Mm, mm, mm. So that's basically what it is. Indeed. Now, um, as we uh, edge towards the closure of this conversation, Patrick, um, you know, just in your reading of this situation, what exactly are the issues then? Just is it, because there's also a lot of camps in football. Let's, let's put <laughs> that on the table. There's, there's factionalism in football. Some actually as deep as, or in fact, uh, you know, smelling of tribal divisions um, uh, because if you if you study if you analyze properly these camps you'd find that uh, uh, one camp or this camp is, uh, is, is, is of people from the same tribal allegiances and stuff like that when football in fact is supposed to be uniting us you remember what Didier, Didier Drogba did uh, during the Civil War in, in, in Ivory Coast a couple of years ago he basically because you know uh, I, I think the nation, it was the AFCON or something, it was some major tournament. And, and he just spoke and, you know, people rallied behind the team which had people of, d footballers of different tribes of, uh, of, uh, of Ivory Coast. So, just in your reading, what exactly is the issue there? Is it self-interest? Is it tribalism? Is it egos that you guys, you know, it cannot be Patrick, it cannot be Ranga, it cannot be who? What is the issue? Well, uh, the tribalism part of it, I've had it, but I, I really don't, do not believe in uh, tribalism in sport. Yeah. Not only for the reasons that you say, because I, I, it's, it's, it's for a simple reason. Look, if you have ever managed a club, uh, you are in it to win it. Mm. And when you appoint either a coach or they select a, a team, you, you don't go out there and say, no, just select 11 Hereros yeah. or 11 Shwambo speaking people. I think it's any person who thinks that's how you develop a, a football team is a, is, 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 is a lunatic. Yeah. I, I just see it as, and it's also not an ego thing, because I mean, uh, if it was an ego thing, uh, Look, the pre current president of the NFA, uh, Mr. Haikali, was part of the decision mm. of the NPL not to allow this directive. So I don't, I don't buy it as, a, as an ego thing. For me, it's relevance. Yeah. It's just a question of relevance. Uh -huh. And a failure to understand governance models mm. of football itself. And it's relevance to this extent. And I don't know whether the relevance then drives self-interest or not. Mm. But it, it's simply this, the way I see it, is 
depending on which governance model you are going to adopt, certain people will be irrelevant. Mm. Uh, in the sense that the governance model adopted to take any person forward yeah. will exclude those who will want to serve in certain positions. Mm -hmm. Now, there is no debate, and, 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 and you can see it, why it's not an ego thing. Yeah. This is, the NPL does not say, we are going to form a professional league, and therefore, we want to be in the structures of the NFA. Mm -hmm. In fact, the current governance model proposed by the NPL is that we do not want to serve in any of the no, nobody at the NPL level want to serve in any uh, governance structure of the NFA. Mm. They will want the NFA to concentrate on their developmental agenda in terms of Article 2A of their constitution mm -hmm. and let the NPL concentrate on commercializing the game. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's not really an ego thing. Mm. But it's, it's, it's relevant in the sense that, you know, s s certain uh, having an ambition it's also good, perhaps, but perhaps certain ambitions drives uh, people to a conclusion that you need to be relevant in some NFA structure so that you possibly ascend and, and uh, be appointed as a commissioner. That's mm. what I see. Mm. And then earn the 1,200 US dollars accompanying and NFA delegations and the likes. And you can see that in, if you go and ask yourself, what are the major decisions mm. that the NFA took, the current NFA executive took before 18th of July 2018? Yeah. It's, it's exactly uh, who, who we must distribute, who is traveling mm. on national team duties mm, mm, mm. so that it, that income is equally distributed. Mm, mm. But if they ask this themselves, what has that got to do with football development yeah. in the country? Yeah. Or, or whether that's in the best interest of the country, you'll find that it's not. Yeah, indeed. The, the final question to you, Patrick, is, um, <coughs> you know, you used a very interesting phrase earlier on, which is being in it to win it. Uh, of course, the context w was that uh, when you're running a football club and, and stuff like that. But you seem to be adopting the same um, attitude in this matter to say that uh, you are actually, as far as this pursuit of league administration is concerned you are in it to win it uh, almost at all cost if i if i if i <laughs> if i look at uh, your, your perseverance the way you are pushing the way you have been expelled and are still fighting on the side um what is it in, in conclusion that would uh, make you change your position what is it that will say i'll i'm, I'm prepared to walk away from this pursuit of uh, of, of of what i'm doing if this, this, this and this are, are, are done, what is it that will, that will make you walk away from this thing? No, in fact, I think you, you, we, we, the NPL is the only body that has even compromised. Yeah. I think if you, if you go back to May, April, May, the Minister of Sports called both parties yeah. and uh, gave proposals on how the matter should be settled or compromised. Mm -hmm. The NPL agreed to every point of the minister's thing and the NFA refused all of them. And that compromise entailed the NPL withdrawing uh, all its, I mean, its cast cases. It was uh, allowing and, and for the NFA to play, as you said, what sort of a tournament to promote mm -hmm. and to go ahead and you'll know that that would have entailed being under the same regime. Mm -hmm. So it's, the NPL has never been in it to win it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to principle, though, one of the principles that we will not as an NPL and as all the clubs of the NPL will not compromise on. Yeah is the integrity of the game and the principles that rules set even by the protagonists themselves can just be changed yeah. to suit certain 
football agendas mm. that we will not compromise on. Now, those are issues of principle. Mm. But the other things relating to football to start and like we were able to compromise on that. Mm. 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 But uh, you know, you compromise on this. But uh, what they, what the NFA, of course, want is not a compromise. Mm. It's capitulation. Mm -hmm. And you never get capitulation in life. <laughs> you never get capitulation in life. Patrick uh, Kauta, thank you very much for your contribution to the show today. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah. I appreciate your invitation. <laughs> sure. It was a pleasure. Yeah, so that is uh, <coughs> uh, Patrick Kauta. He's the chairperson of the Namibia Premier League. Uh, reflecting on uh, the hard stance uh, that uh, the league has taken as far as uh, starting football in the country at the league level is concerned. I hope you have new perspectives as far as this matter is concerned like I do now. Good night. The Northern SME Expo team is aware of the current restrictions imposed on the country by Honorable President Hage Gengob as from the 12th of August 2020. However, we have developed a system that we can use while adhering to the new regulations. Our team will provide you with a ticket that contains details of the media launch as well as a timestamp at which your presence is required. As per new regulations, only 10 individuals will be present in the media hall as per timestamp indicated on the ticket. Thank you for understanding and for your cooperation. We are excited to see you on Friday. For any queries, please contact Nangula Nashandi on 081-4769-304. This event is proudly brought to you by Chico Group of Companies.